Challenges Mother's Day Wusa. I have Shalon here with me. She is a beautiful mother here in Pasadena. We invited her to come out today to share this special moment with all of us. Shalon, Hi, tell us how you found out about the event and your experience today. So, I found out about the event on Facebook. I was invited by Michelle. Mm -hmm. um, the event is fabulous. There's lots of wonderful women here, entrepreneurs, business owners. We've got all kind of girly, pamper yourself situations going on. Mm -hmm. Nails, hair, lashes, yes. foot soaks. Um, the food is fabulous. The women are even more fabulous. Happy Mother's Day to all of us. Thank you. We're here with Thank you. Laura. Laura, tell us how you found out about the Mother's Day we saw today and how you've been enjoying yourself so far. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity. I, I love it. Everybody's cool. I love the support. Um, I found out about it from the, from the website, basically, and the founders. Awesome. So tell us more about yourself and what you do. And how you're Our foundation is called the Rodney King Foundation for Social Justice and Human Rights. Awesome. Okay, so within that organization, you'll be doing the etiquette classes and the, uh, leadership, the camps. leadership camps and all of that. The mentoring, one-on-one. Awesome. -on -one. So is it strictly for young ladies or just youth? In, in general, youth just in general, general. boys okay. and girls. And eventually I want to branch off and do different things. Mm -hmm. um, work with uh, people who've been incarcerated for you know, a number of years, coming out, trying to you know, get a fresh start. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do a program called Dress for the Job and where we um, get donations for, you know, um, gently used clothes that you can wear on interview mm -hmm. because you know, you're not offered that opportunity. Right. So I feel like if people are dressed for the part, they'll feel more confident in getting the job. Right. Did I hold you in my arms? The day my grandmother died, I nominated my older sister to call my mother, to tell her what would surely shake her hand over mouth. I did not want to watch my mother break. I didn't want to hear her voice wiggle or imagine how automatically she would back burner her own pain to begin resolving the questions being asked, what color casket, what dress, what lip color, my mother, she has a knack for disregarding her own pain. When we arrived to the nursing home, her body still warm, my mother hugged her, told her the last of stories, the truth about some things, maybe. I stood outside the curtain. I was certain that this would be the moment that body spasms would happen or something out of one of those horror movies. I couldn't bring myself to look at her. I wanted to remember her a way I did not know her, a way only the camera's lens could capture in the 40s and 50s, the life of the party. She hemmed bells into her skirt. The day of her funeral in a town my mother grew in, a place filled with memories none of us wanted to intimately recall, the three remaining women we sat, manless in the front row, a face full of tears. It was then that I wanted to be closest to her wanted to smell her red door whip through the air. I wanted to know, how do you marry a good man? Had questions I had never wanted to ask until then. You see, there is something so tender about the days following death, something lovely about the way we choose to remember, the way we honor the dead by burying the secrets with them, keeping the unmentionable. My grandmother was a woman I will never fully understand. But what I know, you see, I'm fine with. She wore bracelets stacked so people could prepare for her arrival. She wore gold lame, as all divas do, and made meals I still miss, dumplings made from scratch on holidays. I feel her guide my wrist as I fold potato into milk, know her better when I am barefoot and cooking, when I am dressing for a night out on the town, when I catch a glimpse of her shape on my frame in a window I pass by when my creativity is all I can be, my grandmother. She made clothes only white women wore. 
snuck into stores to see the latest fashion, went home and stitched equality into wool skirts. She wasn't allowed to be as honest as this freedom allows me, born in 1913. Born blacker than she wanted to be, born poor. So these words, this poem, this stage, the way I wear my life loud and effortless, this life of art and cell phones, of internet and fast cars, this, this bold sass is for everything she couldn't be, is the party she wasn't invited to. I hope I smell like her favorite Bible verse. I hope I know somebody hears these bells beneath my skirt, know somebody sees her sway in my hips. My closet is an altar, smells of incense, my linens. Well, my linens, they still hold her imprint. <laughs>